Hey what's up good people, I'm Derek Whitson and in this video I'm going to show you how to correct skin tones in Photoshop. So this image was sent to me by Phil Anderson, a very good friend of mine. He's actually a pet portrait photographer and a really really good one at that. I'm going to put a link to his work in the description below. You guys should totally go check it out. He also supports some really cool causes. Um, mostly with pets and stray animals and that. Please go take a look and see if you guys can help in any way. Um, so Phil sent me this image and he's struggling to get the skin tones here and here to match. And there's really simple ways to do this and I'm going to show you two of them. So the first one I want to do is a hue and saturation layer. So we're going to come down here, we're going to select layer adjustment, oh yeah, adjustment layers, hue and saturation. But before we get into this, I want to show you the actual to the, the differences between the colors here. So if we go here to our color picker and we select this, which is our good tone, well, we have to be on that layer first. So let's go here, select the tone here. Now, this is a good natural tone. We want to match that one with this. And we look at this graph and it, if you don't understand how this graph works, let me explain quickly. So on this axis here, is your saturation and on this axis here is your luminance so your lightness of the color and this here is your hue so these are this is what we really want to adjust now let's take the look at the difference between here and here so let's get a nice mid-tone there and you'll see that it shifts completely to the magenta side from the orange to the magenta so we all we want to do is really move that back towards the orange side. The luminance and the saturation didn't change very much between the two there. So let's do that now. Come to our hue and saturation. And the way I do this is that I click on this icon here and then I click on the area that I want to change. So this will now tell me that the red channel is selected. And if I clicked over here it would have told me the magentas have changed and if I clicked here it would have told me that the blues. So but I just want to affect the reds. So once I've got that selected, I'm going to push my saturation all the way up to 100. And funny as it looks, I'm just using this as a guide. So now I want to take these over here and I want to pull them in so I affect less of the color range. And now I'm starting to pull it out of the legs, which I don't want. And let's pull it this way so we can start narrowing it down. And there we've gone too far, so a little bit back. And that's pretty close. Once I've got that, I'm going to bring this back down to zero. And I'm going to move this, because all we want to do is really affect the hue. So I'm going to move this away from the, the magenta and add a bit more green into it. So right about there should be okay. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to invert my mask, which is Control i or Command i on a Mac. Swap it out. I'm going to select a brush for the relatively low flow, around 10%, and we're just going to paint it out. Paint it in, sorry guys. Don't worry about the painting too cleanly here because you are only affecting the reds. It's already looking somewhat better. Let's check on this side, paint it back. So as simple as that guys so let's just take a look at before and after there's quite magenta and that's a lot closer but let's just go double check those colors so we can come back here and we know that this one was in that region so let's check where we're sitting now much closer so i think we've gone a little bit too far on the hue we can just pull it back a tiny bit let's go here back to the red channels and we're going to pull it down to about there I'm happy, but now I see at the bottom of a foot is still quite magenta. So let's do another layer to correct that. So once again, hue and saturation layer. We're going to go to this icon here. We're going to select the color that we want to adjust, which would be the red channel. We're going to throw that all the way to the right, and we're going to start narrowing down our channel. So let's pull out of it there, and let's go back this way. Okay, so that's about where we want to be. And now we can bring this back down to zero. And shift this again until we have a relatively good color. 
don't worry about the rest of the image, we're going to mask it out. So about here at 25 should be alright. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to select the layer, invert it with Ctrl or Command I. Take your brush again, let's zoom in so we can look what we're doing. I see there's still a bit of magenta in the leg here, so let's just sort that out. Go. Now let's sort out this here. You see that it's not selected this piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to broaden that mark, the the selection again. Do that. Back here, and we just want to go back to our red channel. I just want to broaden the reds a little bit on that. Blends better. Let's take a look. Much better. So it's getting closer to the net, more natural colors. So let's just take a look at before and after. I group those. And quite magenta to a much more natural. I feel there's a little bit green here, so I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit. To about there. That's good. And that's how you do it with the hue and saturation layer. The other way you do this is with a gradient map. And this is not to be confused with a gradient, which is a completely different tool altogether. And before I go into this, I want to explain to you how a gradient map works. So let's go over here. And this over here is a representation of a gradient from your pure white to completely black. And this is all the stops in between from white all the way to black and how a gradient map works is it affects each channel on its own with the luminance of that channel so if we had to take a gradient map and throw it over that let's get a better color palette let's go here so now you look on your white side well let me open that up so i can explain it a bit better You'll see on your white side you've got orange and on your black side you've got purple and it affects each one so from pure black which would be represented as purple to pure orange which is represented as white um, it'll mix the colors to blend all the way through and this is a really powerful tool that you can use for multiple applications but I'm just going to use it now to correct the skin tones so what we're going to do is we're going to come here to our color picker and we're actually going to choose the colors we wanted to, to include into the gradient map. And we want a highlight and a shadow. So I'm going to go with the shadow first. And that's a good shadow right under the chin there. A little bit light, so let's just pull it down a little bit in luminance. Great. And our highlight, which would be probably about there's our brightest highlight in the image. And that works for me. And now we're going to create a gradient map. And it should look something like this and as you can see it has gone and added brown from under the chin to all the sh all the shadows and the pink from this highlight to the highlights now we're going to change this to a color blending mode we're going to invert the mask Control i or command i on your keyboard and we're going to grab our brush again and we're just going to paint the legs but now you have to be a little bit careful because this affects more of the image now so your blacks are not safe. We're just gonna paint out that purple, the magenta. Just like this. Get more of it going. And the reason I set the blending mode to color is because we don't really want to affect anything except the color. We don't want to affect the luminance, we don't want to affect the actual textures. And when you put it on color blending mode, it only changes the colors. It's getting there. Let's scroll out and see. So this is a much easier technique to use. And I find I use this one quite often only when I really want a specific change do I use the hue saturation one. So let's take a look. So that doesn't help. Let's switch off. 
switched on, we're getting much closer to the natural color. I think we can pull this back just a tiny bit, but there, and it is still a little bit there, so we can give it a bit more love. Mask it out a little bit more, or mask it in a little bit more, like this. And I'm being sloppy now on the blacks because I want to show you something. So if you do find that you've painted into your blacks and are starting to change the color, all you do is you come to your adjustment layer, double click on this, and then you have this control panel here. And what this does is it blends the layers. So what I want to do is completely pull it out of the blacks, like so. And if you hold in the Alt option, it allows you to split this pointer. And what that does is it feathers the transition. Something like that, and I'm completely happy with that. And I think that is looking awesome. So there you go, guys. Two simple ways to fix your skin tones in Photoshop. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It lets me know that you guys are liking what I'm doing. Have an awesome weekend, awesome week, wherever you're watching this. And happy shooting, guys. Bye.